there, it's a developer of ShiftOS with another dev update video. Today we're going to be looking at ShiftOS 0.0.4.1. Don't worry about the point one at the end of it, that's just because I released 0.0.4.0 secretly. Well, not really that secretly, I announced it on the forums. But, unfortunately it had a bug in it, so I've just fixed that bug and I bring you this version now. Anyway, the first thing you'll notice is it says, run as admin. This isn't just there for some random reason, this is because you need to run this as an administrator. If you do not run this by right clicking and clicking run as administrator, shift OS will either not work or you won't be able to save the game or save your progress. Everything will just be wiped every time. The reason you need to run this as an admin is because it is using your hard drive to store save files and stuff and it's drawing itself onto the screen pretty much trying to overtake Windows so you can't see Windows. So in other words, it is practically like a virus, but it is a game virus that you can actually quit and get rid of. And yeah, I'm just going to run it for you just without being an administrator, just so you can see what it does. It'll come up with this error. You can either quit quit, which will get out of it straight away, or you can press continue and you'll just see this screen. You cannot do anything. It is completely stuffed. So that is what happens if you don't run it as administrator. So always make sure you, as it says, run as administrator. So right click, click run as administrator. Or if you don't want to keep doing that every time you open it, sorry, I've got an awful screen resolution right now just because I make these videos in this 720p. I usually have 1680 by 1050, but this is just an awful resolution. Uh, mainly because people with lower resolutions, I want them to be able to see all the text and stuff that's going on. If the resolution's 1080p, I just won't be able to film it properly. Anyway, click Run as Administrator here. So right-click Properties, Run as Administrator, Apply. Then you can just open it whenever you want, and it'll always run as Administrator. Double-click. You can't see it on the screen right now, but there's a message saying, do you want to allow it to make changes to computer? Just click Yes. Just a piece of advice, do not watch this video if you want to play this game without spoilers. This video is going to totally take the fun out of this game if you plan to play it without spoilers. But if you're fine just seeing like the development and stuff and you're not really in the mood to play it right now, then go ahead watch this. But if you do intend to play it, don't watch this. And if you plan to make a video, which I highly recommend, if you make Let's Plays of this game, post on this thing video responses to this video as Let's Plays and I'll accept all of them. Now, I'm on the ShiftOS desktop, and you're probably thinking, wait a sec, isn't this just ShiftOS 0.0.3? I mean, look, help, all the same stuff, uh, programs, all the same programs, uh, open, knowledge, input, you know, it's all the same, and I've got the animals, countries, and all of that. Uh, there is a close button gone there, because you can actually now buy close buttons. Um, close, knowledge, input, and you're thinking, it's all the same, but it now includes the Shiftorium. Now this is a program that allows you to spend your code points on a range of upgrades for ShiftOS. Oh, and by the way, I fixed a bug in the terminal, so you can now not click over here and start typing over here. And you also can't go back beyond this thing before you could actually keep deleting and start deleting all of this. So now you are actually stuck. Anytime you try and click away, it brings the actual cursor down here. Now as you can see, there is nothing here that says time. Um, if I type in time, it won't tell me the time. I can't even say open clock because the clock isn't on this. So what I need to do now is open the Shiftorium. This is where I'm going to get all my upgrades for ShiftOS. So here we go. Open, and before I do, I'll just clear this. Open Shiftorium. So this is the new program within ShiftOS 0.0.4. It allows you to spend your code points. As you can see, I have 2,000 code points only because I've got a modified save file, which you can't modify yourself. The thing is, I've set it up so in 0.0.3, you could actually go in there, modify your save file, and change your code points. This version has fake save files. It has encrypted things that pretend to be things that they aren't, and it is just a big mess. You will not be able to modify this, unless, of course, you use Cheat Engine or Art Money, but please don't do that. I'm not going to read all this, but basically, don't modify your code points. You'll use them, and you won't be able to earn more code points, so only just play the game as it's meant to be played. 
So as you can see there's some upgrades here. The only reason I have 2000 code points is because I am using a modified save file that can only be done if you've got access to the source code. So because I am the developer of this game I was able to produce a modified save file that starts you off with 2000 code points. If you play this game you will start off with zero code points and you have to earn the code points by naming all this listing stuff in knowledge input. So here we go, what I'm going to do is I'm going to buy an upgrade. Let's say I want to buy custom username. So it gives you a little bit of information, it says custom username. Sick of being known as user? Want to be recognized and labeled? Then you need to replace the default username with your own. If you want ShiftOS to refer to you by name, then you are going to need this upgrade. As you can see, if I press Control T I can switch between this and the terminal, so this is the desktop and this is the full screen terminal and if I type anything like programs you can always see that it always says user at shift OS and if I type in help there is no way to change my username see terminal commands there is no username change thing but if I buy this custom username for 15 code points buy deducted my code points purchased or bought for 15 code points that's just a preview image of what this upgrade does so it says purchase custom username well isn't this special the terminal will now display any name you want it to even the shift os desktop and some other applications will refer to you by the username you set note that this won't actually take effect in this version of shift os it'll be once the desktop is starting to display your name and you've got logins and stuff anyway to set your username simply type set username in the terminal followed by the name you want so if you now look at the help you can now see that this help dynamically changes based on the upgrades you buy for example you can now see set username this was not here before so it says set username insert username here and that will change your name so for example set username to my name which is Philip and now it's saying Philip at shift OS so whenever I type stuff programs currently installed yada 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 it's always Philip at shift OS or whatever name you want so you now can totally customize your username uh, no spaces though so if I say set username Bill Gates it has gates at shift OS so you, it'll always get the last thing typed if you've got a space in there it'll just get rid of that space and it'll do the last thing you've typed so I'll just switch it back to set username Philip Anyway, now what we're going to do is we're going to buy another upgrade. So, let's see. This one is quite an interesting one. Windows Anywhere. So, having all windows open in the center of the screen is seriously limiting when it comes to multitasking. Buying this upgrade is essential if you plan on multitasking or even just hate having windows centered in the middle of the screen. So, as you can see here, there's also multitasking. So, right now, if you try and open anything else up, let's say open knowledge input. It shuts down everything on the screen and just opens up the program you typed. Open Shiftorium and there we go, Shiftorium is open. So what we're going to do now is enable multitasking. Sorry, I was going to do Windows Anywhere but I might show you Windows Anywhere once we've done multitasking. So this is quite expensive at 50 code points but you can get a lot more expensive things in this. The game isn't balanced right now because knowledge input is the only way you can earn code points. In the future though, there's going to be lots of other games and fun like Pong-like games and stuff where you can, the higher the level you get, you get more code points and stuff and you even will get code points for customizing Shift OS and changing colors and stuff. So that will be really cool too. Anyway, let's get into multitasking. These days, people have many windows open up on their computer so they can edit photos while they watch videos and chat to their friends about how good at multitasking they are. If you like multitasking and having lots of windows open, then buy this upgrade. And as you can see, there's a little preview of having lots of windows open. So I'm going to buy multitasking. Now, congratulations, you can now open as many applications as you want on the computer. Remember that all applications are single instance applications, so you cannot open two versions of the same application. That means that, yes, I can open Knowledge Input and then I can open Shiftorium, but I can't have two Shiftoriums or two Knowledge Inputs or two clocks open at the same time. That's why it's a single instance application, because I can only have one instance, one 
of it, one version of it, open at the screen at the one time. So yes, I can have lots of programs open, but I can't have two of the same programs. A future upgrade will allow you to have multiple versions of the same application open, so that'll be a multi-instance upgrade, but it's not in 0.0.4. So, to switch between open programs slash bring a window to the front, type switch to followed by the application name. Now right now multitasking is pretty useless, so let's say I open knowledge input. Oh wait, open knowledge input. You can see I've got knowledge input here, and you're like, wait, so you can start typing in animals like dog, cat, bird, frog, oops, and stuff, but it's covering up this and you can't click and drag these windows around or anything. What is the point of multitasking? Well, it really just keeps everything open and as you can see, as soon as I click to this window, the Shiftorium, it got rid of that other window. The window is still open. If I type switch to knowledge input, it will bring knowledge input to the screen. Then if I type switch to this thing, Shiftorium, I'm forgetting the names of my own programs, it'll switch the Shiftorium to the front of the screen. And as you can see here, the switch to command is now here. Brings the specified window to the front of the screen. For example, switch to Shiftorium. So now let's come back here. So we've got these two windows open, but it's useless multitasking if you can't have one window say over on the left side of the screen and one on the right side of the screen. So we're going to fix that now with an upgrade called Windows Anywhere. Having all windows open in the center of the screen is seriously limiting when it comes to multitasking. Buying this upgrade is essential if you plan on multitasking or even if you just hate windows centered in the middle of the screen. So if you didn't have multitasking, you could then move windows around on the screen, but you wouldn't have two open at the same time, so it would be useless. So let's just buy this Windows Anywhere. Congratulations, you can now move windows to any point on the screen as long as you understand the concept of X and Y coordinates and screen resolution. Type move, insert program name here, to X coordinate, Y coordinate to teleport the windows to any point on the screen. And you're right now thinking, wah, 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 I, don't, I don't get this. And you're probably thinking, can I just buy movable windows because that sounds easier. And yes, you will be able to, with movable windows, press keys on the keyboard to move windows around. But we're not going to do that. I'm going to show you right now how to do the other ones. So, clear, help. I'm going to show you Windows Anywhere. So as you can see, move, insert program name here to X coordinate, Y coordinate. Move a specified window to the chosen point. So, and here's an example. Move Shiftorium to 12300. So let's, let's do an example here. I'm going to close Shiftorium. And shift door is closed and close knowledge input. Now both windows are now closed. Now I'm going to type in open knowledge input. Now doing this on this screen is really bad for the YouTube video because I've got such a low resolution screen multitasking is practically useless. So if you've got a higher screen resolution it's better because you can fit more programs on the screen. It's This game is optimized to be played in 1080p or 1680 by 1050. So use one of those resolutions, don't run it at 720p or lower, it is ridiculous. I'm going to now move knowledge input. So as you can see, knowledge input is in the center of the screen. Basically when you set a location, it will set the top left hand corner of a program to any point on the screen you want. So if I said 50-50, that would take it, okay, let's get the mouse at the top, 50x and 50y would move it here. So that would move knowledge input here at this point of the screen. So right now, I'm going to type move knowledge input to 50-50. Now watch what that does. Knowledge input has now been moved up to this corner of the screen. It is 50 pixels as you can see here from this side of the screen, 50 pixels this way and from the top of the screen, 50 pixels down. If I say move knowledge input, let's say I wanted it more to the center top of the screen, to 350, that would still keep it quite high up on the screen, but it would move it more to the center of the screen. There we go. There's knowledge input more in the center of the screen now. Now I'm going to open Shiftorium. Now Shiftorium, as you can see, is overlapping, but at least I can click between them. 
A higher resolution is highly recommended here, otherwise you're just going to have all these silly overlapping windows and it'll drive you nuts, like it's driving me nuts now. Anyway, I'll try and move this away. Move Shiftorium to, uh, oh, what should I do? 300, 100. Let's see if that moves it away. Oh. Move Shiftorium to 400, 300. That's a bit better, and then I'll try and move, move, knowledge, ah, oh, forget it, I rage quit. Okay, so I'm just going to buy movable windows now. It's very expensive, okay? This is why you're going to be using these commands. If you can buy this, buy this. You want to get out of using these awful terminal commands. I hate terminals and commands. That's why this whole game is about escaping a terminal-based operating system and moving into a graphical operating system of course you can keep the terminal side of it if you want. So let's do movable windows. It says, although it's nice to be able to type commands in the terminal to teleport windows to any spot on the screen, it's a little time consuming and difficult at times. Well, with movable windows, you can move windows with the arrow with the keyboard arrow keys. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click buy. As you can see, I bought it. Now, if I click on the window I want, let's say I click on this window, this window is now selected, or this window is now selected, whatever. I'm gonna hold shift on the keyboard, and I'm gonna press left, 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 down, 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 up, 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 up. All of this while I'm holding shift. And as you can see, I can click on any window I want. I can even hold down my finger on the button and move it side to side. And as you can see, it's going side to side, up, oh, don't, don't let that, don't let it go out of the screen though, otherwise I've had a few problems with losing it. Then you've got to type in stuff like move sh knowledge input to zero, whatever, to zero, zero. Yeah, let's just... <laughs> let's just... Okay, that is why we're going to have a few issues here. Unhandled exception has occurred in your application. If you click continue, the application will ignore this error. Index was... Okay, let's continue. There we go. So that is an error. If you start typing in these commands wrong, you're going to have a few errors. Do not press quit, otherwise you'll lose all your save progress. Just press continue and hope that shift it all works, okay? Now I'm going to show you another great thing you can buy, auto-scroll terminal. So right now, if I type help, um, where's the help? See, it's at the bottom of the screen, so I'm going to type in clear. Now what you want is, you want auto-scroll terminal, getting sick of it filling up, so you buy this, and that means it'll now, the buggy terminal is fixed, so you actually fix your own bugs in this. If the terminal now overflows, it will automatically take you to the bottom. See that? So you're always at the bottom now. So that's a nice thing to have. When it's full screen, it doesn't really matter, but when you've got a windowed terminal, yes, a windowed terminal, that is when this matters. So let's buy the window terminal. So we can now switch between windowed terminal, it'll go to a program like a window. <laughs> I'll, I'll show you, and full screen terminal to make it full screen. Let me just show you, here we go. Um, a clear windowed terminal. As you can see, the terminal is now windowed. And I, I can move it around the screen, and I can move this away so it doesn't look quite silly, and there we go. Programs. So I've actually got a terminal on the screen that coexists with all these programs on the desktop, which is great. Okay. So, now we're going to buy something else called the, not the terminal scroll bar, I, I actually don't like that upgrade. <laughs> okay, let's clear this. We're going to buy KI add-ons. So this adds new stuff to guest to knowledge input. So if I click buy, you can now get car brands. So I'm going to buy that. And game consoles. There we go. See those two things just got added. So here we go. I'm going to click car brands. And I can start guessing some car brands. So just move this over here. What car brands can you think of? Uh, I love the Nissan Leaf. So I'm just going to write Nissan. Uh, I don't actually like the way it looks, but I like the fact it's an electric car. I love the speed and look of Lamborghinis, if I can, ugh. Lamborghini, if you can spell these words, Lamborghini, yeah, if you can spell them, they get added up there, and yeah, you can keep going, let's see if I can list some more, Ford, Toyota, uh, if I can just list 10, because I need to prove that you guys can guess, because there's 89 car brands within this, it's not all the car brands, but it's quite a lot. Uh, Ferrari, 
Sorry, I suck at this. BMW. Yes. Uh, Audi. This is so hard. Okay. See, this is... And you're only getting 10 code points for this. And if you get to level 2, it's 20 code points on top of that. So it's 30 if you... 30 code points if you can list 20 cars. Still, this is hard. Like, you're not going to be able to buy all this stuff in the Shiftorium unless you were, like, an expert. What I recommend, though, is never go on the internet to try and get information about this. Open some books. Go down the street. It makes it fun. Like, for example, with car brands, t if you're running this on a tablet PC, like a Microsoft Surface, which is pretty fun, actually, to run this on a Surface, go down onto the street. Open up Knowledge Input. Walk along. Try putting in all these cars. Like, look, oh, if you look on the back of a car, you'll say, oh, you know, Toyota or Nissan Leaf, you can actually see the name of a car on the back of a car. So go on and type in like the car companies you see. Ah, I just can't think of any more. Sorry I suck at this, it's my own game and I can't even do this. Ah oh, right, uh, I, I just remembered one, Suzuki. Yes, I got that one. But I'm probably not going to get, I just need two more cars. Jeez, this is annoying. Oh, what about Mishib Bishi. Ah, I don't know how you spell that. Mitch. Ah, uh, bitchy. Ah, oh, Mitch a bitch. Okay, I can't spell this. <laughs> well, let's just forget the car brands because I can't do that. I'll try to game consoles. I just want to show you the fact that when you earn code points, this updates live, so it's actually really fun to have. Oh, and while we're at it, let's get something else cool. Uh, I'm going to buy Seconds Since Midnight. And seconds since midnight, it says a bias appears to have the ability to uh, track how many seconds have passed since midnight. Um, it's not a very good time format, so right now if I type help, I'm cheating here. Okay, time shows the amount of seconds that have passed since midnight. So if I type in time, since midnight, 39,145 seconds have passed, and I can keep typing it, but that is annoying. Like, if you want to know what time it is, don't you think that's annoying? So, you can actually buy a clock. So I'm going to buy it. See, you could type time in the terminal, but that's a little inefficient. So there's an app for that. Let's buy the clock. <laughs> now, you can now use your expensive computer as a cheap clock that hopefully displays the time in a nice format. You can now spend the day watching the time or even play knowledge input while the time is being displayed if your computer can multitask. And my computer can multitask, so let's now... Oh, and if I go to Programs, here's Clock. Let me now open Clock. And there it is, and I'm using the shift key to move it to the top corner of the screen where clocks usually are. There. It can be there. That's a nice-ish spot for it. Knowledge input can be up there. And this, you see, this is why you want a big screen resolution, otherwise all these windows are annoying overlapping each other. And something interesting, actually, I want to show you here. If I move... Oh, look at that. <laughs> That's like you've actually purchased a clock because you can't see. But uh, anyway... There's no window borders, so as you can see, this just merges in with it, right? So what you want to do is you want to buy some window borders. And I've just realised that that is a bug, because you should have to buy grey first before you buy window borders. But anyway, I'm not going to fix that bug in this version, I'll do it in the next version. Uh, let's just say I bought grey and a title bar, there we go. <laughs> now all my windows have title bars. Anyway, I need that clock back. Quickly go down and get the clock. Clock come back up here. Okay. Anyway, instead of being silly and moving the windows around like that, let me show you a new way you can now move around windows. Draggable windows. Now this is some serious expensive stuff. So if you've got a title bar and you've got movable windows, you are then able to buy draggable windows. That means you can click up here and drag the windows around, but right now I can't do that. So if I click buy, look at how awesome this is. Uh, it's lagging because I'm recording with Fraps, but if you're not recording with Fraps, it is smooth as hell, and it is awesome to be smooth as hell. <laughs> what, what, what am I saying? It is awesome to be able to grab windows and move them around like this. Like, oh, you, you just feel so powerful. <laughs> this is like a very exciting part of the game, isn't it? Anyway, <laughs> game consoles. So this is stuff now, earn that title by listing non-handheld. So you can't type in Game Boy or Nintendo DS. You have to go PlayStation, uh, PlayStation 2, PlayStation 3, PlayStation 4. There's no PlayStation 5, so I can't do that. There was an Xbox, um, an Xbox 360, 
um, an Xbox, the new, newly released Xbox One, uh, an Ouya, or whatever, <laughs> however you pronounce it, which is like a, I don't know what it is, it's a very interesting, it's a cheap game console that you can run all these games, I don't know what it is. I just know about it, and the Linux community do like this console for some reason. I, I haven't really looked into it, but it is a... Don't knock it off, I think it is a good console, whatever it is. Now, <laughs> GameCube, as you remember, Nintendo's GameCube before they had the... Now, watch this. This is a moment of truth. As soon as I press this, you will watch my code points go up by 10. See, I've got 1,400 code points here, 1,400 code points. Submit word. I now have... 1,410 code points, so it's great to multitask and watch code points get earned as you do things. It's nice to have the time here instead of having to type time, time, time all the time. This time can actually be improved. You can get minutes since midnight. Like, you don't know what the hell that... Like, what time is it now on this clock? 39,000 seconds have passed since midnight. Do you know what time it is here? No, you probably don't. So, it's not really a good thing. Anyway, let me just type a few more. Where are you? Just to prove that I'm knowledgeable, Nin... None. Nintendo 64. There's 125 game consoles here. Uh, Atari. This is way beyond my... Way before my era. Atari 2600. Uh, Nintendo from the, 80, from the 80s. Nintendo, also known as the NES. Nintendo Entertainment System. Now, as you can see, because it got too big, it's showing the last thing you typed, it still works and it overflows there. But don't worry, stuff you're typing is still going in. Anyway, that is that. Now let's do some more upgrades. We all need to know what programs we've got at all. Oh, this is a bug, by the way. If you click here, like let's say you purchase something and you click here, it will mess up your game. Do not click that. If you accidentally click in this space below the upgrades after buying an upgrade, don't click buy or anything. It'll just, it'll suck up your code points. Just make sure you just click an upgrade quickly and you'll be fine. Anyway, title text. Since looking at a program won't tell you the name of it, you need title text. Unless, of course, you want to go through the trouble of remembering the name of the program. Like, what the hell is this thing here? What the hell is this? What the hell is... I don't know what this program is. I don't know what this is. But if you buy the title text, shaboom. Clock. Shiftorium. Knowledge input. Terminal. I now know the names of all these programs. Helps me so much. Okay. You can also buy a close button. Now, this thing is lovely. Look at that awful animation there. Close! Here we go. Should be... You shouldn't have to open the term. I shouldn't have to type. Close clock. I should be able to just get a close button. Oopsie. Close button. And there we go. All my programs now have close buttons. So if I want to close something, close, close, close. But unfortunately, if I want to open them, I've got a... Oh, and by the way, the terminal is now opening like this when I press Control T because it's window terminal. If you want it full screen again, just type in full screen terminal and it's full screen again. Um, I want it to be a windowed terminal though. And I'm gonna open clock and put it up there. Put this up here. And I'm gonna open Shiftorium. And there is actually more upgrades. Don't think that's it now because there are more upgrades. Here we go. I'm now going to buy a desktop panel. Now, this is going to un unlock some more upgrades. So what this does, and I'll probably have to move this down to show you, is 150 code points. The reason it is set so high is I've set it so that any desktop upgrades you do for the desktop, this blank black desktop that does nothing, are going to be more expensive because I want to try and make people focus on upgrading win their actual windows and then get the ability to upgrade the desktop. So that's my way of saying it's all open-ended, but I prefer you to buy this before you buy this. <laughs> that's basically what it is. So, desktop panel, got a boring blank desktop, feel it doesn't really serve a purpose, then you need a desktop panel. This beautiful grey desktop panel will sit at the top of your desktop and do absolutely nothing for only 150 code points. Yeah, that's right. Whoa, you got a desktop panel that does nothing. Okay, so... You're probably thinking, so why did I spend 150 code points on a grey bar at the top? Now, wasn't that worth it? Your desktop looks like it could actually do something now, even though it can't. Doesn't this just make your life feel totally complete now? No? Well, go buy some more upgrades and maybe that grey bar at the top will actually serve a purpose. So, we're going to do that. Let's say... Oh, this is a nice one. Desktop panel clock. 
Oh, that was that was a bit odd. Six six six. As soon as I opened it, okay. You can now see I've got two clocks, so I can actually close this if I want. But I'm going to keep it open because I like overkill. I like having two clocks at once. But if you didn't have the clock application open, that would still be going. So that's pretty cool. Now this is something pretty cool. At launcher menu, launching programs by typing their names in the terminal is very counterproductive, especially if you are bad at spelling. A menu on the desktop that displays all programs on your computer and allows you to launch them would be a huge time saver. So now, applications, but there's only the terminal there. So now I can close and open the terminal graphically, even though you can open and close the terminal just by doing control T, which is actually easier. Wow. The way we're going these days, anyway. So I can now open and close terminal just like that. And it will always open to the middle of the screen. Anyway, now, let's look at some more upgrades here. I've now got an upgrade to get the clock up there too. So I can now open and close a clock. And I'll add knowledge input and shiftorium. And now I've got some programs up here. So let me close everything and open everything for the kicks of it. Knowledge input, you can go there. Shiftorium, you can go there. Clock, you can go there. And last of all, terminal, you can go there. And if you have a big resolution on your screen, which I highly recommend you get <laughs> if you don't have one already, do it. If you're on a laptop, well, you're pretty much stuffed. So, let's get another upgrade. We're going to buy App Launcher Shutdown. So that means you can now turn off the computer. Instead of typing in here, Shutdown, which I'm not going to do right now, you can actually, whatchamacallit, shut down like this so just click shut down and boom your computer will shut down the same way it would if you type shut down here so now you've got a completely graphical system but there is so many more upgrades that are going to be in future versions this is just the base upgrades right you in future versions are going to be able to buy a program called the shifter you'll be able to change the color of this text change the fonts you're going to be able to move the close button change its shape make it so maybe you don't want a little square close button maybe you want one centered or maybe to the side but an x kind of glued to the top of the window in a rectangular shape I don't know, but you'll be able to do all of that in the next version. You'll be able to buy more colors, and all of the colors will be able to go into these programs. You'll be able to change the terminal colors, the these, the possibly these colors, but to a limited degree until I release a new version because this is a lot of stuff here to change. It doesn't look like it, but you can. It's a lot of work to get this to change. Anyway, but all the windows, background color can all be changed in future versions. You will even be able to skin it. There will be a program called ArtPad. You can open ArtPad, you can make like little gradients and stuff and actually make this a gradient. You can draw your own desktop backgrounds. It's just going to be amazing. And you get code points when you draw stuff and upgrade and customize and make your own skins. You get code points for doing that, which means you'll be able to buy more tools for the ArtPad to make better skins and just amazement goes around in a circle. Oh, and just to get you even more excited, sorry I'm getting you too excited here. What well, we're all excited, let's do minutes since midnight. Oh, we're almost getting a lot of 666s here. So before that becomes a 666, let's do hours since midnight. You can guess what the time is now. You know that it's 11 a.m. Since midnight, 11 hours have passed. PM and AM, there we go. Just proved my point. The time is 11 a.m. Let's buy minute accuracy time. The time is 11.05 a.m. And this is great. And now split second time, which is a bit expensive, actually. The time is 11.05.32 a.m. There we go. That is a better time system. <laughs> Way better. And also, it kind of... It keeps all this stuff when you turn the game on and off. This is all saved. So that's great. The game actually saves now, but... Do not try to modify your saves. There's a lot of fake save files and stuff that will leave you unable to earn more code points. So whatever you think is wrong when it comes to modifying this, so don't touch those save files, trust me. They're either fake or going to mess up your game. So you will, let's get back to this, you will even be able to download an in-game web browser to browse the real internet. Yes, not the fake in-game internet where you're going to have to buy more websites that go into the trust so you can access them. This is actually going to be the real internet that you can also go into as well as a fake internet. And you from there will be able to download actual
actual stuff like let's say you wanted to buy I don't know let's say you wanted to set the window this is a Windows XP start button uh, start button <laughs> the close button as a Windows XP red X close button you could actually download the red X uh, then open up the shifter set the skin for the close button as that red X and you will have a Windows XP close button you could even do that for the title bar to have a Windows XP title bar uh, start you could even have this whole taskbar at the bottom of the screen if you wanted and make it the Windows XP you could change it to what you want you can make it look like Linux or anything but the start menu is always gonna look like this unless you buy a few more upgrades it will add icons and do other things so it won't look like the XP start menu so you can't make shift OS look like any operating system you want it to but you can make it look similar to other operating systems obviously shift OS won't have the same notepad that XP has you yeah it, it, it can just generally have a general skin of an operating system so you can really customize the way shift OS looks now the best thing about this is if I click shut down now look at my code points 535 I'll click shut down it's shutting down now what it's doing here is it pauses because it's saving your game if you do not let it do that saving the game you are screwed all that progress is gone so if it crashes without you typing shut down that's why I recommend every time you buy an upgrade or reach a new level I'd probably shut it down just in case it crashes somewhere along the line but now because it is saved and I open it as an admin run this as admin right click or set the preferences to admin if it's not an admin it could actually wipe your save file the reason all this admin stuff is going on is because I'm not a certified developer I could be a hacker an untrusted person because I have not paid Microsoft hundreds of dollars to say hey I'm I'm not a virus maker there do you know that's why I don't get the privilege of it running as an administrator without me setting it as an administrator but there we go you've got all the upgrades um, you've got your code points all stored you've got all your programs such as the clock everything is there let's just buy a terminal scroll bar for the terminal and it will open up the terminal there is a scroll bar so if I now type in help I can now scroll now yes blue is being displayed that is because this stupid visual basic is stupid that's all I'm gonna say sorry about being unprofessional there but it is you have to literally go into all these hacks and classes and do all this stuff just to try and get a hacked scroll bar that isn't really even gonna work as well as a real scroll bar so for now the shift OS scroll bar is gonna be the default window scroll bar until I can do stuff anyway let me just full screen terminal just to show you windows can be dragged around the screen you can see that it is only black white and gray this all updates as you upgrade so this help is an evolving help screen which will evolve as you evolve shift os anyway i hope you've enjoyed shift os feel free in fact go ahead right now make some let's plays uh, hopefully you don't have your let's play ruined by the fact that you've watched this video but go ahead make let's plays see what levels you can get up to without cheating yes maybe you wanna make a video of yourself with knowledge input going around the house trying to find this information in books and going down the street filming yourself go down the street with cars that would be a pretty cool let's play that would be really involved in you getting inside the outside world totally wrong word to say but there we go hope you enjoyed this version of knowledge input next version will add the shifter allowing you to not customize skins that will be 0.0.7 .0 allowing you to do all the skin stuff but 0.0.5 will allow you to customize colors and positions so you'll be able to set the title bar of Windows to the bottom not sure that could really mess up some things uh, but possibly you'll be able to set the title bars of Windows and if you don't know what a title bar is this is a title bar here this gray thing so you might be uh, want to have the gray thing at the bottom of the window or the gray thing at the top you might want this applications menu at the bottom of the screen so that this list opens up from the bottom like you know follow the mouse movements if the mouse is being displayed on the screen there we go okay it is now time for this video to end I won't see you probably for another two months until the next version is released I'm really really sorry it's gonna be a long time till the next version but maybe if I get a lot of positive replies from this and a lot of people really liking this making lots of let's plays I might be encouraged to make the next version faster anyway I will see you next time enjoy knowledge input have lots of fun remember that you can still move windows around in the old ways using the shift button and when you buy the upgrades you can still have access to the old stuff 
I'll see you next time in another Shift OS update video. Goodbye.